In this short documentary, we are going to be looking at some interesting features and discovering some of the history of the Bedfordshire section of the Grand Union Canal. Until the late 20th century, Bedfordshire had no canals within its county boundary. The short three and a quarter mile stretch of canal now in the county, which opened in May 1800, was in the parish of Lindslade, which in those days was part of Buckinghamshire. In 1965, the county boundary was moved, placing Lindslade in Bedfordshire, and it became part of the civil parish of Leighton Lindslade. When the canal was built between 1793 and 1805 by the Grand Junction Company, it was named the Grand Junction Canal. In 1894, the Grand Junction Company bought the canals which now comprise the Leicester Line. Then, in 1929, the Regent's Canal, the Grand Junction Canal and the two Warwick Canals were amalgamated and renamed the Grand Union Canal. We begin our journey at the section of the canal where it joins at Lindslade in Bedfordshire from Buckinghamshire. Just inside the Lindslade boundary, the canal widens to create a winding hole or turning point. These were usually located close to industrial areas or wharves allowing boats to turn. When the canal was built, bridges had to be constructed linking roads and fields that had been newly severed by its route. There were six in total along the Lindslade stretch, which carried the Grand Junction numbers 110 to 115. Bridge number 110 at Sandhole lies a few yards from the Winding Hole and is the only bridge which remains close to its original appearance. It was built in 1800 and carries the road from Heath and Reach into Lindslade. It has a single arch of yellow brick, probably made from the local galt clay. The arch spans both the canal and the towpath, with the canal narrowing appreciably under the bridge. Ironwork guards fitted to the bridge have suffered from the friction of passing tow ropes. These deep grooves testify to the strains of hauling heavily laden horse-drawn boats through the arch. The Grand Junction Canal Bridge, number 110, can be seen just above the arch on each side. The bridge had two wharves on the south bank of the canal. These served the busy sand quarries of Heath and Reach and were used to ship loads to London and to the Midlands. The remains of the wharves are still visible. Three quarters of a mile further towards Lake Buzzard, another bridge, number 111, spans the canal in Globe Lane. Originally, this would have been the same construction and appearance as the bridge at Sandhole, and built around the same time. It has a single span and abutments of red and yellow brick, but the arch has been replaced with a later style iron girder span. The Globe Inn lies a hundred yards from the bridge and is a very popular mooring point for lunches, dinners and overnight stays. Access to the Globe by road is via the Iron Girder Bridge and makes interesting driving along the widened towpath. In December 2012, a taxi and its driver ended up in the canal after dropping its passengers off for their Christmas party. The driver escaped unharmed. It is thought the Globe Inn was originally a farmhouse. In 1830 it became a beer house serving the bargees and their families. Over the years it has been extended in various ways, but the frontage of the original part of the building remains close to how it was in the 1800s. Bridge number 112, just north of Leighton Lock, is typical of the swing type introduced elsewhere by 1826. Although the bridge looks like it may be complete and is the only one left along the stretch, it is very overgrown and difficult to see. 
This type of bridge was used when it was more convenient to cross the canal at the ground level, by farmers perhaps who may only require access to fields on an occasional basis. The single lock, number 27, called Leighton Lock, despite it being in Lindsley, is the only lock required on the three and a quarter mile stretch and lies 200 yards further along the canal from the swing bridge. The lock itself is fairly typical, having double gates at both upper and lower ends. It has side ponds or tanks, now rather overgrown, which could store up to half a lock of water each, a great asset when supplies were low. A canal plan of around 1800 shows the lock with the tanks, meaning they were original design features. A number of dates around the lock suggest the times of some or all of the major overhauls, 1864, 1876 and 1932. Most recently, in January 2015, repairs to the lock included the bottom gate refit, sill replacements to stop leaks, and replacement of the stop plank grooves. A little further south, a property called the Martins once stood. It was built around 1900 by Gordon Cale Thomas, the engineer of the Grand Junction Canal. Designed with Chinese architecture in mind, the garden included an ice house and a sunken tennis court, which could be used as an ice rink in the winter. After World War II, it was converted to flats, and in June 1971, the Martins was totally destroyed by fire. Another swing bridge, number 113, was also used to cross the canal south of Leighton Lock, but was demolished around the beginning of the First World War. Its abutments are still clearly visible, with the classic narrowing of the canal where the bridge stood. L.B. Faulkner's Wharf, established by 1806, lay on the west bank of the canal off Bossington Lane, south of where the Martin stood. Mr. Faulkner ran a fleet of boats from the wharf, carrying various cargoes across the canal network. At the end of Faulkner's Wharf sits a winding hole. Although looking like a small wharf, it was originally a turning point for boats returning from Leighton Buzzard. Located opposite Faulkner's Wharf, another engineering feature of interest is the Twelve Arches Weir, which runs under the towpath. It is described as a waste weir on the original plans of the canal. The elliptical arches reflect the styles of the road bridges. The weir, which drains into the River Ousel, was probably used to regulate the level of water in this section of the canal to prevent overflowing. A little further along on the east bank of the canal, there's a large mooring area. A section of the berths available here, designated by white bollards, are for a two-hour shopping stay conveniently located next to a large supermarket chain. Other berths are also available for longer periods and overnight stays, allowing time to investigate the history and architecture of the market town of Leighton Buzzard. Redall and Young's Wharf was in business by 1819 and lay on the west bank of the canal behind 24 Leighton Road, as can be seen on this map. The wharf ended in a narrow basin at right angles to the canal. The wharf later became known as Wichello's Wharf, after Stephen Henry Wichello and Son coal merchants. By the late 20th century, the basin attached to the wharf had become choked with reeds and mud and has since been filled in. Bridge number 114, which carries Leighton Road into Linslade, has been heavily modified. When first built, it presumably looked something like the bridge at Sandhoe. It was first substantially altered in 1845 and partially rebuilt. In 1881, the roadway was widened, which involved further alterations to the bridge. In 1969, 
a completely new carriageway was built which was set upon the earlier abutments. In recent years it has been modified further to carry the increasing weight of traffic between Leighton and Lindslade. South of Leighton Road, on the east bank, was the wharf of Grant and Lawson, later known as Brantham's Wharf. It probably dates back to the opening of the canal. It had a private dock which extended from the rear of Grand Union House to the canal. In 1974, the dock serving Brantham's Wharf, by then choked with weeds and mud, was also filled in and a car park constructed, although its attractive humpback bridge, called the Towpath Bridge, was preserved through the efforts of Leighton Buzzard Preservation Society. The winding hole opposite Brantham's Wharf may also have been useful for easier navigation of larger boats entering the dock under the Towpath Bridge. Mooring is available along the east bank of the canal, with the town centre just a short walk away. Leighton Buzzard hosts a variety of shops, pubs, restaurants and cafes. Charity Wharf also lies south of Leighton Road on the west bank. It was so called because it originally formed part of the Wilkes Charity Estate. It became a wharf in the late 19th century. In 2008, the site was redeveloped with new housing called, naturally, the Wharf. A little further along the canal is Tiddenfoot Waterside Park. Once a busy sand quarry sending shipments of sand all over England. Now it has been transformed into an oasis for wildlife and developed for visitors with surface pathways, picnic tables, benches and bridges. It's also the home of Leighton Lindslade Canal Festival, usually held at the end of July each year. The last bridge, number 115, a swing bridge since demolished, lay just north of the Lindslade boundary, opposite Tiddenfoot Waterside Park. A sudden narrowing of the canal remains at the spot where the bridge stood. Just a few yards further on, traces of Garside's Wharf can be seen, complete with its semi-inset two-foot gauge railway track. This line was not part of the Leighton Buzzard Light Railway, but served Grovebury Quarry. It connected with the other tracks serving quarries and works in the area to the south of the Lindslade to Dunstable Railway branch and east of the canal. It appears to have been horse operated at first, but later used locomotives. The last boatload of sand was shipped from the wharf in 1965. As late as the 1960s, the canal was used to transport such loads as coal, grain, steel and sand. This finally came to an end due to tunnel closures around 1977. The original Grand Union Canal only ran from Foxton in Leicestershire to join the Grand Junction Canal near Watford Gap in Northamptonshire. Today, the canal is alive and well with pleasure boats, walkers, cyclists, day trippers and a little bit of fishing. Why not take some time to enjoy Bedfordshire and explore the three and a quarter mile stretch of the Grand Union Canal? Mm -hmm.